everybody this is going to be another color gray technique in photoshop as a result of a question i got from and i can't even pronounce his name and he requested not to uh, use his name anyhow um i believe he's from india just uh, based on the name but anyhow the, the question was isn't there a way i can just use solid colors to do color grading techniques in photoshop and the answer is well yeah are we ready to do this let's go everybody welcome back to my channel if you're new to this channel once again this is dedicated to increasing your creativity and knowledge and working in photography and also as a photo artist trying to get you to think out of the box creatively to do something different and unique with that out of the way if you could do me a favor and that is please like this video subscribe if you have not subscribed and hit the notification bell that way the next time i upload a video you'll get notified on that okay let's talk about another way of uh color grading as a result of a comment or question that was uh delivered to me and uh, again if you have any issues or questions please email me at it should be right here at the very bottom of the screen uh, steven photo at gmail.com okay so what i'm going to do is we're going to take an image that looks like this and we're going to turn it into something like this. All right, with that out of the way, let's get started. All right, let's take a look at Photoshop. And what I'm gonna do is just double click anywhere in my workspace area and navigate to the folder that has the images you wanna work with. These are the two I'm gonna work with right here. So I will select those, choose open. And just a little tip for you guys, if you already don't know this, there's a category here called libraries in Photoshop that we've had for quite a few years. And if I take a look at this uh, just blue image I'm going to use to do uh, a cover, uh, or uh, I should say a, a color grading with, you could, if you know you're going to use this in other projects over and over again, I would suggest you load it into libraries. Now, I covered a little bit of libraries in some past uh, projects, but if you don't know anything about it, um, I can create my own categories here because you notice I have like objects here and and colors, which I'm going to add that uh, image to. But uh, if I want to add a new category, come down here where you see a folder and uh, just uh, says new group. Click on that. Give it a group name. I'll just call it my group for demo purposes. And I'm just creating a new category uh, in here and uh, again called my group. And it just says click and drag, whatever you want to load in there. It could be images, textures, different overlays. If you want to get rid of a group, just right mouse click on it and just choose to delete it. Okay, so with that out of the way, I'm going to choose the uh, category called colors. And just with my move tool activated, just click and drag this into that category. And now it loads that uh, in the colors category that I have here in libraries. Now here's, here's what's really cool. I also have a laptop and the laptop also has Photoshop installed. If I go to Photoshop in that laptop, open it up, as long as I, I have internet connection, that library will update. And if I add something new on my laptop to libraries, close out of that, come over here to my desktop, open it up, it will update my library. Once the library is updated, you don't have to be online. It's just important to be online if you want to sync back and forth the different assets that are in the uh, library area. Okay, so with that out of the way, I don't need this. I'm going to close out of this so that's gone. And let's take a look at our image. And to use the background, I'm just going to click and drag this color on top. And I'm just going to reposition this. And let's resize that so it covers the entire image and then hit enter now somebody might say well do i have to have that or could i do this let's hide that let's grab that oreo cookie dipped in milk there and let's choose a solid color and then again pick something that's in that blue area something close i don't know what color if you knew the uh, rgb values you could plug that in and that's just another way of adding color i mean there's no right or wrong it's just what you want to do. So I'm going to throw that in the garbage can. And we'll reactivate that. Now the blending mode I'm going to use with this color 
usually is going to be overlay versus soft light. And I'm going to choose overlay. It's a little more dramatic, and that's what I want to do with this image. So before I move on, let's let's talk about um, color grading and doing any kind of an effect that you want to do in your image. Please remember, when you create images, it's only for one or two reasons or both reasons. Number one is for yourself only. So you're going to do what you want to do and what you like. You don't worry about anybody else, what they think. It's what you like because it's for you. It's not for anybody else. If this is for a client, that's you know the the, uh, the other scenario, and that is well, I got to make sure I satisfy the client because I need them to pay you know my commission on doing this work. So um, I don't care what anybody else thinks. Everything is so subjective out there. Do what you feel is right for you, your style, your look uh, that you would like to do. Okay, so I'm going to leave that very intense because I'm going to make this very aggressive uh, and moody. Now, if you take a look at this, if I turn off the top layer. This has a very warm look to it. And because I'm looking at the light, that was a tungsten light and it's nice and warm on her. So I want to bring some of that warmth back into this color grade right here. And the way we do that is we can add a mask. And then if we remember what a mask is, white reveals the information on that layer. Black would conceal that blue overlay uh, on this layer. So what I'd like to do is paint with my paintbrush, obviously, so B for brush. I will be at about, uh, let's drop it down to about close to 30%, let's say, uh, in terms of opacity. Make that a little bit, oops, grab that brush again. Make that a little bit smaller. And instead of me painting on her, which I want to do, but I'm going to accidentally paint on the wall and I don't want to do that. So I'll share a little technique with you. I'm going to click the image and I'm going to grab this tool here on our toolbar. There's a little fly up menu called Object Selection Tool. And I'm going to click and drag over this area and tell it to select that and let it do its thing. And sometimes it might grab, you know, the, the person along with the chair. Um, I really don't care. I'm just looking at this area right here along her head and the arms and stuff. So I think it did a good job. And let me zoom in on this so we can see this. I'm going to go on the mask now. And when I grab my paintbrush, B for brush, remember if I paint out here in black, it's not painting out there. And it's because I have an active selection. So if you've never seen some of my uh, past videos, uh, we know that when you make a selection in Photoshop, whatever you do next only affects the selected area. So because I've selected her, I can paint out here. It just doesn't do it. It only will do it in this selected area. So this helps me keep this technique, like when I'm putting back in the warmth into the image on her face on that one side. I'll leave the other side that goes to that bluish color grade, but I'm just going to highlight these areas, go down the leg, maybe halfway down. I mean, this is very subjective again. How far do you want to go with this? Make that a little bit smaller. Paint right down there. Again, remember, you are the artist. You're going to do what you feel is right for the situation. And um, that should be good right there. So just to show you what's happening here, I'm going to hold the shift key down and that turns on and off when I click on the mask. So there's a mask turned off, turned on, turned off, turned on. And again, very subjective, but um, I like the way it's looking right now. Now, again, I just want to get rid of those marching ants. So control D like in David, command D on a Mac that will get rid of the uh, marching ants. Some people call them dancing ants. I call them a pain in the ants once in a while. Okay, so let's pull back on the image and let's take a look at this so far. So there is uh, the before and after on a simple little color grade, but there's a before and after with the mask applied to her. So I want to add some warmth to that. Also, uh, I know the fact that there's some warmth in here and even on the wall. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to grab my paintbrush again, make this a little bit bigger, and I'm going to paint again on the mask in this area a few times to add some warmth because again this was looks like they were tungsten bulbs in the lamp 
And then I'm going to take this really big and we're just going to click and drag like the light would be just going across on her. And of course, it would come down here on the sides a bit too. And it might do that a little bit more, add a little bit more intensity to this. And again, turn this on and off. You can see I'm adding some warmth on that wall a little bit. And if we take a look at the mask, that is alt click on that. That'll show you that. There should be, uh, I think it's command click on a, on a Mac computer. But that's my mask. And again, you can play with opacity if you pull, you know, prefer to pull that opacity down so it's less aggressive. But uh, I really want this to show up on the video. So I'm going to push that at 100%. Uh, percent. Now, with that done, um, I'm going to just add a little bit more drama to this image. So I need a stamp layer at the very top. Remember how to do that? I did that in past videos. It will be Shift Control Alt E like an Edward will give me a stamp layer at the very top. If you were on a Mac, it'd be Shift Command Option E, and uh, that would add that stamp layer. Now with that created, I'm gonna go to Multiply, because it's one of my favorite things to use, and I'm gonna add a mask. Now, you know what I'm gonna do? Control Z, I'm gonna save some time. I'm gonna undo that. The mask I'm gonna add is this right here. I already made it. So let's save some time. I'm gonna hold the Alt key down, Option on a Mac. Here's a little tip, click and drag it up by holding that Alt key down and it actually duplicated the mask at the very top. So now it's like turning on and off the lights right there. And again, I could pull the opacity down of this top layer if I want to. Again, um, there's a before and after on adding that light right there. Um, I want this really dramatic. Also on this mask, I might want to see more of the bottom there. So I will just paint right there, just add just a little bit you can see what I'm doing here on the mask just by adding a little bit more down there. So again, that's just adding some lightness. And again, you're all in control of that. So um, there is my before right here. And there is my after right there. So with that out of the way, hopefully you picked up a couple things you didn't know here. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of different ways of actually color grading. Uh, in Photoshop, and I tend to like to control my light. This technique works great if you have a light source like a lamp or window uh, where you know that light is coming in strong. I love doing this kind of uh, kind of a technique uh, in my images. And again, it's a little on the aggressive side, but that's what I wanted to do. Okay, so with that out of the way, if you could do me a favor, if you like this video, please get that thumbs up, like, subscribe if you have not subscribed, and also uh, let's... Um, hit that notification bell so the next time I upload a video, you will get notified. Again, my email address should be at the very bottom here. It is stephenphotoartist at gmail.com. And I'm going to end this video like I always do. And that is get that camera out. Get out there taking pictures, a goof up, make mistakes, because that's the way we learn. And think out of the box creatively. And I mean literally think out of the box. Until next time, See ya!